Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Platt's online education program, Let's Paint, and I'd like to welcome you to Color Lessons. This is the second year of the Let's Paint program, and last year was so successful with our Studio Lessons program. So many of you uh, joined us for our monthly tutorials, painted the paintings, and then posted them online. It was so gratifying to see your artistic journeys and to see many of you paint for the very first time. So hopefully this year, you will join us each month for a new color lesson, and we're going to paint lots of florals and some landscapes this year but we're not just painting the same kind of florals. These are gonna be a much looser style of floral, much more impressionistic or even a little bit abstract. So it's gonna be a challenge for some of you, but I think it's a way that you all will be able to create beautiful floral paintings that you'll be proud to display in your home. To create today's color lessons, I used the new Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush Set. These brushes have beautifully lacquered handles, nickel-plated brass ferrules, and a synthetic bristle that has a perfect amount of snap and spring to it. You're absolutely going to love using these superior brushes to create your paintings. I'm also using the new Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Paint. This paint has been specially formulated to be a very heavy bodied acrylic paint that has extended open time. You'll be able to use this paint to create impasto effects as well as some transparent watercolor washes. This particular paint set is supported by an online color theory tutorial where we take a deep dive into the basics of color theory, explaining how to create all 12 colors of the color wheel as well as tints, tones, and shades. It's a great uh, video lesson that I think you'll really enjoy and learn a lot from. If you're not skilled in drawing, don't worry about that. We've got you covered. Uh, you can purchase our color lessons design sheets which come with full-size designs for you, as well as lovely color photos of the finished paintings. And you get a photo and a full-size line drawing of all 12 color lessons. So let's get started. Today's lesson is gonna focus on a few key techniques. We're going to develop some transparent washes of color to just establish a little bit of a background effect we're going to paint some loose hydrangea flower forms. Uh, we're going to develop the background, which is going to come all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. And probably the most important aspect of this particular painting are the lost edges, where you can't really tell where the edge of the vase stops and where the shadowing of the background starts. So developing soft or lost edges is going to be a key feature of this painting. Today, I'm painting on a clear, primed linen panel. Uh, I think this is one of the most elegant um, surfaces that you can paint on. It is natural linen and it has a clear acrylic primer on it so that you actually see the color of the linen. And these are available um, online. You can get the panels which are much less expensive. You can get them as stretched canvases or you can get them as gallery wrapped canvases. Um, for purposes of working on an easel, I actually like the um, the boards uh, so it's a little more support behind your uh, paintbrush. You can see that I have transferred my design onto the uh, linen panel using gray artist transfer paper and I've transferred only enough of the design so that I kind of know where I'm painting. I don't want, um, don't want the design to really kind of hinder me uh, in making a change to the painting if I need to as I'm working. So I'm going to be using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush, which is a nice synthetic brush with plenty of spring and snap. And when you paint with it, um, it just applies the paint in a beautiful uh, way, and it's a very responsive brush. I think you're really going to enjoy using those. All right, so let's look at the paint that I have on my palette. I have a nice assortment of Folk Art Pure Artist pigments on my palette. I have Prussian Blue. I have Ultramarine Blue. I have Dioxazine Purple. This is Payne's Gray. It is not black. Again, that's Payne's Gray. I have Yellow Light. I have Pure Orange. I have Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, and a nice big puddle of 
titanium white. And I've kind of mixed all of these um, with my palette knife to make sure that they're uh, nice and workable. So we're going to get started now by creating some transparent washes of color uh, in the upper left corner of my canvas. So I have a uh, folk art floating medium in this little dish that keeps it from running on my palette, keeps it in a nice uh, place where I always know right where it is. So I've loaded my brush with a good amount of the floating medium and I'm just working it through the bristles of my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of Prussian blue and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And you can see that I'm just brush mixing these two colors together. You'll see me do an awful lot of brush mixing on my palette as we paint. So I'm not sure if this is exactly the color I need or exactly the amount of transparency that I need. The only way that I can judge that is by applying the paint to the canvas. And I think that's a little bit brighter than I want it to be. So I'm simply going to wipe my brush on a paper towel. I'm going to pick up a little bit more floating medium on my brush. And I'm going to just begin to kind of pull this down and blend this color out. Notice that I'm holding my brush um, not like a pencil, like many people are used to holding a paintbrush when they paint, but I'm holding it down near the end of the handle with my index finger on the brush and I'm just pulling in vertical strokes on the canvas. I'm going to wipe my brush off again. I'm going to pick up some more of the floating medium and just begin to blend this out. Now the floating medium is not going to add any working time to the paint, but I've got plenty of uh, time to work with the folk art artist pigments without worrying about them starting to seize up or dry. Now, Many times during this lesson, I'm going to tell you to go ahead and stop before you mess with it too much. The reason that I'm going to tell you to stop is because I don't want you to overpaint or overthink. When trying to paint in a loose impressionistic style, uh, it's better to stop than to keep going. Uh, one rule of thumb that I want you to keep in mind is as soon as you think you need to do one more thing, the only thing you need to do is stop because trying to do one more thing, more than likely you're just going to add something to the painting that's not what you want. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know how it's gonna look when we're all finished with our painting, but it's pretty transparent and it doesn't really look like anything except a little color in the background and that's really all we want at this time. So I'm gonna now shift my focus over to this part of the canvas. And again, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue and some Prussian blue picked up together. I might add just a little bit of Payne's gray and maybe a little bit of pure orange just to tone this color down a little bit. If you've watched our color theory video, then you know it's easy to tone down blue with its complement orange. And I think this is as good a time as any to start introducing some of these principles to you. So now I have a dark blue that's a little bit toned down and I'm just going to begin to brush this on. And notice that I'm not trying to paint this on in any particular direction. I'm going to continue on the dark side of the painting and notice that I'm not worried about where the vase ends. Just brushing this color on. All right, I'm perfectly happy leaving this the way this is right now, knowing that I'm going to have to put another few layers of paint on there but I am taking my ultramarine blue and I'm adding some pure orange to it and just, again, brush mixing here on the palette. I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray to this because I want to darken it up. And I want you to be aware that I have not put my brush in water at all. So I'm going to 
begin to paint in the vase. Creating a nice, clean, sharp edge. And then just filling it in. And it doesn't matter if your vase is the same color blue as my vase is. In fact, it's probably going to be impossible for you to have your vase to be exactly the same color mine is because I just brushed mixed a color and I probably couldn't make the exact same color again if I tried. I'm also going to begin to paint in the reflection of my vase. Again, making sure that I have a nice, crisp, clean edge. And then we're just going to paint that in. And just continue this color all the way across to the edge of the canvas. The color, one more time, is ultramarine blue plus pure orange, which is going to tone and darken the blue a little bit. And then I've added just a little bit of Payne's Gray to make it even darker. All right now I'm going to put this color right up under uh, the flowers that are in the vase and then carry this color all the way across to the right hand side of the canvas. So far I don't think any of this is too difficult for you to do. I've been teaching painting for a long time and I don't ever want to try to teach you something that I think is too difficult for you to do. I will always work to come up with a way to make it achievable for even a novice painter to have success. So I continue to brush mix my ultramarine blue and pure orange with just a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm just brushing this on and I just want to carry this dark color all the way over to the right side of the canvas. So far, I'm not trying to refine the vase or the reflection. I'm just getting some blue color on. And I want to make sure that I work this paint into the weave of the canvas and carry that dark color right to the edge because we don't want to know where our vase stops and the shadowing begins. So I'm just gonna kinda clean off my brush a little bit, brushing this color up. And now I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray and a little dioxazine purple on my brush, much more Payne's Gray. And I'm going to begin to add some of this dark color right underneath the flowers. And then what would be the dark or shadow edge of the vase. So that vase would be somewhere in here. And I'm not sure exactly where it is, and that's quite all right, because I don't care. I'm just going to blend this color out and move it over to the right-hand side of the canvas. And notice that I've turned my brush now vertically, so I'm not really blending with the contour of a vase. I'm just adding some marks over here on the dark, shadowy area of the canvas. And now I am going to blend some of this into the center of the vase. I'm not striving for a completely rendered, softly blended look. Just want to move some of this dark color into the reflection area, and across toward the lighter edge of the vase. If you need to, you can wipe your brush. And also, you can pause the video at any time during playback and catch up with me. If you need some additional time, don't try to rush and paint right along with me. It's better to watch and understand what I'm doing and then come back and paint along. So again, I'm going to add some more Payne's Gray 
plus dioxazine purple. And I'm just going to add this in where I would imagine the edge of the vase is and then let that carry over to the edge of the canvas because I want this to be very, very dark and give a nice moody atmosphere to the painting. When it comes to painting at the bottom of the canvas, you can always turn your brush down toward the bottom and get that edge painted and then carry the color up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and brush mix that with some pure orange. And I'm just going to start blending this into the dark blue. And these new Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes are absolutely wonderful for this style of painting. You are going to love them. They're responsive. They've got a great amount of snap in spring. And this paint is still plenty wet, so there's plenty of time for me to blend and soften this as much as I need to, but I don't want to play with it too, too much. Now, I'm going to wipe my brush off. And I'm going to pick up some Prussian blue and a little bit of titanium white so that I'm making like an intense blue color. Don't want it to be too light in value when I start off because it's going to seem pretty bright when I put this on the vase. So I've got a nice bright blue color and I'm just going to begin to brush this on to create an area of interest on the vase. Put a little bit right out there at the edge. Then I'm going to kind of mirror some of this down here at the bottom. Again, I don't want you to spend a lot of time trying to blend this. I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off my brush and then soften this color a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more titanium white to my mixture to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter in color. And I'm just going to blend some of this on. And again, I'm not trying to create a realistic um, vase. I just want everybody's going to look at this and know it's a vase with some flowers in it. So I don't need to work any harder to get that uh, point across. So I'm going to add a little bit of a mimic of that kind of highlight down in the bottom. Now, we're going to branch off into some um, artistic license areas. So on my palette, I have picked up some dioxazine purple, and I'm just going to mix that in with some of the Prussian blue and white color that I made, because I want to make a nice purpley color. And this is some of the things that you will eventually begin to just do instinctively. I knew that I didn't want this painting to be 100% just blue. I knew it was going to need some other colors, and a color that works well with blue is purple. So I've got a nice purple shade on my brush, and I'm just going to add a little bit of purple there. I'm going to bring a little bit of a, a purple accent down here. And I'm going to just soften this just a little bit more down there. Bring that over, add a little purple there. And I think that's going to... Now I'm going to wipe my brush off. And when I talk about pinching and grooming the brush, I pinch it between a paper towel like that and pull. So that takes the excess paint out of the brush and it also keeps the brush groomed to a very nice sharp chisel edge for painting. Also notice that I keep my paper towel neatly folded so that when I wipe my brush, I'm not getting paint all over my hands or on me. I like to be a very neat painter when I'm working. Let's add just a little accent, kind of for fun. 
I'm going to shift to my number eight filbert brush and Prussian blue and titanium white. I don't want this to be too bright in value. But I'm just going to add some lightness right along here. And I'm just going to put the brush down and pull, and I'm going to leave that. This is where you have to be confident. You're going to put the brush on there, apply the color, and leave it alone. If I go back to mess with this, I'm going to end up making a muddy mess, and I'm not going to be very happy with it. So I'm not finished with the vase yet, but I can say that I'm probably 90% finished with it because it's got a nice dark area over here. It's got some interesting color going on. I've got some variation in my blue tones. I've added some violet there, and we've got a nice little interesting light spark going on there. What I am going to do is take a moment and let this completely dry before I move on. Okay, we had uh, let this dry completely, and I've taken a few minutes to tidy up my palette, and we're going to start back in, and I'm going to use some floating medium as a glazing medium. Again, picking it up on my one inch brush, and I'm just going to begin to kind of dampen the canvas. Because what I want to do is I want to make this particular area just as dark as I can possibly make it. So again, just brushing on a thin layer of the medium. And this isn't gonna hurt your paint at all, the paint that's already been applied, but I just want a very, very thin application of this just so that my new color has something to slide around on. So I'm going to pick up straight Payne's Gray on my brush, and I'm going to just start adding that in right in this area. And it's just making that a little bit darker where you are losing the edge of the base into the shadow. And I'm just gonna brush this out, softening it in either direction. I want to create a little suggestion of a table line. So I'm going to do that by loading my one inch flat brush with Payne's Gray and I'm going to come right at the very center of the vase at the bottom and I'm just going to begin to apply a few marks of the Payne's Gray just like that and then I'm going to carry this back toward the shadow a little bit. This should not be perfect and I don't want you to fuss with this too much because it's not really a table, it's just giving the suggestion of a table and then I'm gonna leave that alone. Now, I'm going to wipe my paintbrush off, pinching it between the paper towels so that I groom the brush back to a nice sharp chisel edge. I'm going to pick up more of the floating medium. And I'm going to pick up some Prussian blue and ultramarine blue and just kind of make a mixture of the two different blues. I'm gonna add a little Payne's Gray to this just to darken that down a little bit and maybe add a little bit of the complementary color orange to dull the color some. So let me just go over what I've created here on the palette. I have a mixture of Prussian blue ultramarine blue, a little Payne's gray, and a little orange. And I've just mixed that together with some of the floating medium to make a transparent color. So I'm going to put this on the canvas where I have my blue hydrangeas. So you can see just how neatly and carefully I am applying this to the canvas. Just making sure that I, I don't want to paint the outside shape of my hydrangeas to look like um, bubbles or um, want them to have a little bit of an angular look to them. And again, just scrubbing this on and you can see that this color is transparent. It's not an opaque coverage of paint. And this is just the foundation layer 
that we're putting on there. So don't worry about it too much. I'm just evaluating what I have on the canvas, always looking and seeing if things are as they should be. I am looking at my vase a little bit and I want to, I'm thinning down some Prussian blue with some floating medium on my brush and I'm just going to brush a little bit of this bright blue onto the vase, not covering up everything that I did before, but just brushing some on here and there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of titanium white and add that to this mixture. And I'm going to add a little bit of a brighter highlight right there. So by having that little bit of transparent color underneath gives me something to soften that highlight into a little bit. So again, picking up a little bit more blue and a little bit more white. I'm going to come back right along there and just add a little bit brighter highlight. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll brighten this up down here just a little bit and then just repeat down there. That's a little better. Okay, so we're going to leave that alone for just a minute and I'm going to come back up and I'm going to add some additional coloring to the hydrangeas. I'm gonna pick up some Prussian blue and some ultramarine blue and a little bit more Payne's Gray. And over here, I want there to be a darker area. So I'm just gonna punch a little bit of dark color on there and I'm going to add a little bit of dark over here where the blue hydrangeas go behind the kind of white hydrangeas. So again, don't spend all of your time fretting about how this goes on there because you're not going to see this when you're done. I'm just adding a little bit down here just to kind of repeat the color and make sure that that's interesting down there as well. Okay, I'm gonna lay down my one inch flat brush and I'm going to pick up a number eight filbert brush. And I wanna hold this filbert brush up here so that you can see it. And you can see that it looks like a flat brush except the end of the filbert brush is rounded. So this will give me no sharp edges and I think it's a really interesting brush to get comfortable using. So I'm going to load my filbert brush with some titanium white a little ultramarine blue and a little Prussian blue and see how that color looks. So I want a nice blue color. I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray into that. Maybe a little bit of orange because I want to dull that color down. And then I'm just going to check to see that that color's not too bright, that it's going to like pop right off the canvas. So I am going to begin to paint um, hydrangea petals or hydrangea flowers or a large cluster of individual flowerettes and they have five little petals. So we're gonna put one petal, two petal, three petal, four petal, five petal. One, two, three, four, five. If you are the type of person that has to paint every particular flower perfectly, then you're going to be miserable doing this because you just don't want to take the time to paint every flower petal. So we're just making five petal flowers here and there, and it doesn't matter if every single flower has perfect five petals to it. Some will, some won't. Um, what you want to do is to just kind of keep in mind that you're painting five petal flowers but if you don't necessarily see all five petals, that's perfectly fine. Because if you were looking at real hydrangeas, you would not notice every um, five petal flowerette in the big cluster. So none of these flower petals are very bright to begin with. Um, just kind of a medium value. I want to make sure that the outside edge of the hydrangeas is not, um, I don't want it soft and round. I want there to be some interesting shapes out there. 
and it's more important that you have interesting shapes than you have fully formed flowers. Let me say that to you again. It's more important that you have interesting shapes than you have fully formed five petal flowers. That's gonna be hard for some folks and that's okay. You'll get used to it. I want you to have fun doing this. And I think learning to be a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more casual and carefree with your painting, it's gonna take some work for some people. I know it took a lot of work for me to be able to paint something and leave it um, a little bit more impressionistic because I tended to want to paint and render absolutely everything. And as my friend says, paint the dog, don't paint the fleas. So as long as I'm painting these, and when I showed this painting to a friend of mine, she goes, oh my God, I love hydrangeas. I thought, well, my work there is done because I don't have to do anything more. Uh, if people know it's a hydrangea, then I don't have to, I don't have to write it on there. I don't have to work any harder to, um, to have it be a hydrangea. So I just keep loading my brush, making this kind of, this nice blue color. I'm gonna leave this dark area alone, and I'm just gonna, oh, that's a little brighter than I wanted, but that's okay. And notice that I'm not necessarily working directly across the uh, bunch of hydrangeas. I'm moving around. And I love how some of this, um, the linen is showing through the flowers. I think that's quite nice. All right, so I've established uh, some different values of blue. I've still got lots of dark here. I've got a lighter area going on here. There's some shadowing here. I've got a few bright flower petals popping up back there. So I'm going to just add more white to my brush. And I've not been adding any floating medium or water to the paint. So these paints are fairly thick and I like that they have an almost sticky consistency. And I'm just adding some brighter flower petals. The paint is not drying so quickly that I can't get some um, kind of some of this underneath color to show through. Uh, the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments has a nice uh, open time so that you can really um, get some very interesting colors happening without having to work terribly hard for that. I think you're really going to enjoy using these paints and just exploring what they can do for you. And again, don't worry about painting in every um, single petal. Just And once I've painted what looks like a few individual flowers, it seems that it's a little they just seem a little too perfect, a little too planned, a little too regulated. So I'm just going to um, 
pick up some more color on my brush and I'm just going to come paint a few more flower petals here and there. And I'm just kind of breaking up the, um, the fussiness of those flowers. So I hope that you can see now that just by adding these little petals here and there that I've created some interest and I've not been painting individual flowers. All right, I'm not quite done with this, but I can't stand leaving that area over there um, naked. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up a, a brush and I'm going to make um, a yellowy green color. So I'm picking up some yellow light on my brush and that color, as you can see, would be so bright and shocking on this painting. I want to tone that yellow down and I'm going to do that by adding a little bit of dioxazine purple to the yellow. And I'm going to thin that down with some uh, floating medium just to loosen that paint up a little bit. Add a little bit more violet because I want this to be a little bit of a kind of a brownish color. And then to make it a little bit green, I'm going to add a small amount, and I mean a very small amount of Prussian blue. And this is where thinking about how your colors work together because yellow and blue make green, but yellow and violet make a brown color. So if I want a brownish green color, then having some violet um, in with my yellow and blue will give me a much nicer, much softer color. So hopefully that you can see the dramatic difference between yellow to the color that I've got on my brush right now, which is much softer. I'm using a, a three quarter inch brush. I could have used my one inch brush, but it had so much blue in it that I thought that the uh, three quarter brush that was clean would have been a better choice here. So I'm just gonna soften that out. I do wanna make sure that I've pretty much hidden any transfer lines that I had. And again, I wanna make this an interesting, pretty shape. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more uh, dioxazine purple and a little Payne's gray. So I wanna darken this color up a little bit. And what color I have now on my brush is kind of a, a muddy gray brown color. And that's going to be perfectly fine because I just want to add a little bit of tonality uh, to this cluster of light color flowers. And then we're going to add some of that right in there neatly and carefully. <laughs> it's not really neatly and carefully. I'm just scrubbing some on there. But you can see that I'm like just moving some color around so that I've got it in more than one place on the painting. Now I'm going to actually clean out my number eight filbert brush. Just rinse it out in water. So I want to take a good amount of that blue out and I'm going to load the brush with white and some of that dirty color with a little bit more yellow in it. So what I'll have on my brush is a light kind of dirty yellowy green color, which is perfect for these hydrangeas. So I'm just going to start building some flower shapes on there. Picking up more paint as I need it. And I keep looking at my uh, finished painting as a reference. That's a little too bright over there. So when I put that on and it looked too bright, I'm going to stop and leave that alone and come back over here. And we're just gonna put some loose petals out at the edge. And then we're gonna fill in with some five petal flowers here and there. This is the time if you're painting by yourself to have some nice relaxing music going or if you need or want a nice relaxing glass of wine or a pitcher of sangria, whatever it takes to have a nice, fun, relaxing time while you're painting this because you don't want to try to 
force yourself to paint perfectly formed five petal flowers. That's not going to make you happy and it's going to look very stiff and artificial when you are finished with this. And our goal is just to give the impression of some beautiful hydrangeas in a vase. And you can see that this color is a little bit lighter and I'm liking that. But I just kept picking up some more white. And if you're painting along, and I'm not going to, probably not going to be able to do it now that I want to show you an example, but if you make a flower petal that's not what you want, that's the wrong color, or it's just something's not perfectly right about it, if you think you can live with it, then by all means, live with it. Don't try to correct it or wipe it off or do something like that. Just let it go. You are going to be your worst critic. And I always tell people when you show someone a painting, just show them the painting and don't say anything about it. You don't need to point out a flaw that you perceive is in your painting. Um, there are enough critics out there to do that for you. So just let them give you a compliment, which they should. If your friends are not supportive of your painting, then you need to find new friends who are. Life is too short to have people who are so critical of everything you do. Oh, I'm liking how that's looking. All right, now I've neglected this over here for a while, so let's... Um, dirty our brush up again so it's not quite so bright and we'll come in and pop in some flower petals over here and I'll pick up some white and we'll lighten that up and put a few brighter petals there. Okay. I think I want to make a couple of these petals just a little more yellowy. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow light on my brush with the white. And I'm just going to add a couple of more yellowy petals. I think that added a little something nice to the painting. Gave it a little bit more variety. We just have a few more fun little things to do with this painting. Oh, I like that very much. That little bright yellow that's in there. Oh, just because I like it doesn't mean I need to add it everywhere. I just get excited and want to start putting things uh, everywhere. So, like I said earlier, when you think your painting needs just some one more thing, you need to stop because it probably doesn't need anything else there. Okay, just looking at my painting again for reference, I want to come back to my blue hydrangeas, and now I'm picking up a little bit of the previous lighter color, you can see here on the palette that I just keep going kind of back into the same general area, but I'm adding some more white so that we have a nice light color. It's not stark white, but it's pretty light. And I'm just going to bump up a few of these flower petals here to give my painting a little bit more um, point of interest. I would think that's looking really nice. And I hope that when you're painting that you compliment yourself when you do something that looks good. Sometimes you're the only person that's going to love what you do, so you might as well just go ahead and share that love with yourself while you're at the middle of doing your painting.
someone asked me if I loved everything that I painted. And of course I said yes, because I painted it. Um, I, don't, I don't really love everything that I paint, but more often than not, I'm pretty happy with, with uh, what I paint and show people. And I'm just trying to evaluate and see if this needs some more lightening or brightening anywhere. Took a painting workshop and the instructor was spent a lot of time talking about developing your composition and creating the dark areas and so all of that was going on. And so she comes around to my easel and she looks at my painting and she goes, it's time to light it up. So this is what we're doing now with this painting. We're lighting it up, just adding some sparkly little white bits here and there, not everywhere, but you do need your painting to have some bright, crisp highlights on it. And I'm thinking, that's probably quite enough on there. So I'm going to stop with my hydrangeas. And some of this area uh, back here is the original uh, color that we put on the canvas. I actually really haven't painted anything else on there. And you can see that we have no um, idea of where the vase stops and the shadowing starts, which I really am liking that but we need to add a couple of little hydrangea stems to our painting. So I'm gonna use a number two script liner brush and I'm going to thin down some yellow light just with water. And I'm thinning the paint with water instead of the medium because I want the paint to actually flow off of the brush. Now I'm going to add a little Prussian blue to my yellow light because I want to create a bright kind of spring green. And now that I have that bright spring green, it's too bright. So I'm going to tone it down by adding just a little bit of orange to it. Just want to dull that green down a little bit. I could have added red, but I think the red would have been too dark. So that's why I chose orange. And I'm just loading up my flat brush, not my flat brush, it's a liner brush. It's a number two script liner brush. And I always want to be mindful and share this little tip with you that when you've loaded up your liner brush, you may have some water that's collected on the ferrule. So I always blot the brush where the ferrule meets the bristles to take off any excess moisture so that I don't end up with my water running off the ferrule onto the bristles and then onto the canvas or painting where I don't want it. All right, so here in this kind of dark area, I want to add some little hydrangea stems. I'm just going to add in a couple of little stems. just like that, and where I think that's a little too bright, I'm just gonna tap it with my hand and soften that. And then might be just a little bit more. Right here. Make that a little bolder. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna clean out my liner brush and on my palette I'm going to make a mixture of some titanium white and alizarin crimson which is going to be a super vibrant kind of hot pink color and I'm going to thin that down with a little bit of water so that it's a nice soft consistency Then I'm going to load my number two script liner with this soft consistency hot pink color. And 
I'm only doing this just because I think the painting needs something that's a little bit bright and unexpected. So right here at the bottom of the vase, I'm just going to apply some hot pink right at the bottom of the vase. And then I'm going to pick up some red light And just because I'm going to add a little bit of red light right there. We've done everything except give our painting some jewelry. So I think this particular painting needs some white earrings. So I'm picking up a palette knife and I've loaded it with just a little bit of titanium white. And we're just going to hang some earrings or hang an earring right here on the vase. Boom, just like that. And now the painting is finished, at least in my eyes it's finished, with the exception of adding my signature to the painting. And I, I prefer that you sign your painting somewhere neatly and discreetly. Um, I will probably sign it somewhere over here, and I just use a nice colored pencil to sign my paintings. Then once your painting is thoroughly dry, then you should varnish it. And I would varnish my painting with um, Folk Art Clear Acrylic Spray, and probably on a painting like this, I would use the matte finish. But spray it so you get a nice even coverage, and that'll even out the sheen of the paint, and it will help protect your painting from dirt and the elements. Thank you so much for joining me for today's color lessons. Hope you enjoyed creating the hydrangea painting, and I want you to join me next month when we'll be painting golden reflections. We'll explore some simple landscape techniques that I think you're really going to find fascinating. Thank you.